many people expressed thanks and appreciation and wished the best to Jason Kelsey in his retirement. One of them, Russell Wilson, who is not retiring, but who made news late in the day yesterday with the thing that we all expected or should have expected from the moment he was benched with games left in the regular season and the Broncos still mathematically alive in the chase for a playoff spot in the AFC. The Broncos will release Russell Wilson at the start of the league year. Why at the start of the league year? Because they have to do it as a post-June 1 designation in order to take the cap charge that would be $85 million and split it over two years. It's not a 50-50, $42.5 million split, 35-4, and then the balance after that. However, there is a way they could do it. I'm going to write this up at PFT. I'm not going to bore anyone with it now. I'll bore you with other stuff instead. They could take a bigger number for 24 and less for 25. There's one specific thing they can do. They've yet to determine that yet, sources tell me. But it's going to be $85 million in dead money over the next two years because they traded for him. And then before he even played in a regular season game, they gave him a contract they never should have given him. Now they take it away. Now he's going to become a free agent. And now the Broncos are going to move on. And it's all about that $37 million for next year. They didn't want to owe him $37 million fully guaranteed in 2025, so they eat the $39 million they owe him this year. And if they don't do the thing that they could do to reduce next year's number, that's the one that's coming next year, it can still be reduced, so it's not set in stone yet. It can still be less than $40 million. They'd have to take more now to make that happen. But if they do what we have thought they're going to do, 35.4 this year, 49.6 next year for a grand total of 85 million in dead money, which means it's money they have paid him or will pay him because they owe it to him this year that comes back and hits the cap after he's gone. This is I I, I this is monumental, right? I mean, we knew this was coming. We knew this. I mean, we know people around football. We knew it was coming. Sean Sean Payton had a Freudian slip last week anyways and said, we got to get the next one right, right? That was like, oh, Great well, catch. there's going to be a next one, yep. right? So we knew that either way. But, you know, even if we didn't hear Sean Payton, you know, you've been all over it, telling him that he's going, you know, the, telling the whole world he's going to be released, right? I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is one of the most monumental organizational blunders in, in the history of football. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. it. It really is. When you talk about all the assets that were given to trade away to get Russell Wilson, the amount of money, the new contract you talked about, and for what? For basically nothing? A few wins, right? Not playoffs, not anything like that. Just a few wins, Relevant in the news a little bit for a little while because we got it. That's all they got. You know, that's crazy, right? Let alone then one of the greatest coaches of all time, certainly one of the greatest offensive minds of all time, comes into town to sweep in and I'll save the day. I'm the quarterback whisperer. Everybody knows that. I'm the offensive genius. I'll fix this situation. Well, fixed it to a degree. Fixed it to a point where he said, wait, I think I've maximized the fixing and it ain't good enough, right? Oh, no. Like, is this all we got here? Uh-oh, right? So this is this is insane. This is a huge, huge story. Russell Wilson won a Super Bowl. We looked at him as being, you know, a big-time franchise quarterback, yet... All he's done in Denver is kind of show the opposite. The flaws have all come out. All of it. And he's not, you know, in the category of the guys that he so badly wanted to be like Mahomes and Josh Allen. Let me do that. Let Russ cook. Well, yeah, Russ don't cook like Mahomes or Josh Allen. Their meals are a lot better. Well, that's where it is absolutely crazy. And then to have three of the eight dead salary cap numbers in the history of football all be attributed to Russell Wilson that's a huge hot a huge shot to him the reality the perception of him whatever those things all that's around Russell Wilson you sit here right now and you go where the hell is Russell Wilson going to play quarterback next year and who 
the hell is going to have the guts to make him the starting quarterback after what we've seen the last three or four years, whether you go to Seattle into Denver. So this is crazy stuff. This is stuff you don't see every day. We're, I think, a little numb to it because we all saw this coming. But I, I mean, still, when I saw it yesterday, I was just like, wow, I, I can't believe it. In, in, incredible. Well, and remember, that trade was the culmination of multiple years of angst that yes. the Seahawks wouldn't right. let Russ Cook. And I think I've learned over the past few years that let Russ Cook is more of a post-snap thing. A hundred. snap thing. A hundred. I think that's how he got himself into trouble with Sean Payton. There are certain things that need to be done before the play begins. Right. Russell Wilson right. was not doing. One of the problems is the play takes a little too long to get in. And then you go line up. And we see all the gesticulations of the Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allens and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady's of the world. You don't see a lot of that with Russell Wilson. He just wants to make magic happen with the ball in his hands. And whatever the reason, and we're not casting blame here, we're just explaining why it didn't work. It didn't work because yeah. the stuff that Sean Payton needs a quarterback to do before the snap wasn't happening. You get from a bad play to a good play before the snap. That's preferred to turning a bad play into a good play after the snap. Although it's great if you can do it, not every quarterback can. Right. But most quarterbacks are expected, if they spot something in the defense, to turn a bad play into a good play before the snap. When you yes. don't have any time left on right. the play clock to right. do it, that's a problem. And I think that's just a slim example of why Sean Payton came to the conclusion he came to that this guy is not our franchise quarterback. Therefore, we're not going to let another $37 million in injury guarantees for next year become fully guaranteed on March 17. That's what this is all about. Yeah. If he would have agreed, if he would have agreed to bump that, that vesting date to next year, which is what they asked. They didn't ask him to waive his injury guarantees. They didn't. That's been... The biggest misconception about all this, fed by the fact that Russ has kind of casually and maybe inartfully explained it that way. They never asked him to give up injury guarantees. They wanted to take that vesting date from March 17 of 2024 for next year, 2025, 37 million guaranteed. They wanted to move that to next year. And, and if you do that, and hey, we owe the guy 39 million anyway this year. Maybe we will keep him around. He's going to be the Maybe quarterback of the Broncos. Work with him. Right. Maybe we will. Right. Maybe we will try to make lemonade and or chicken salad. That would be a nice lunch for Sean Payton and company if they could pull it off. But they're not going to take on another $37 million No. In full guarantees for an experiment that wasn't going to cost them any more anyway because they were already on the hook for the yes. $39 million this year. That's, That's right. why he's been cut because he refused to move the $37 million vesting date from injury guarantee to full guarantee. Yeah, I mean, Sean Payton wasn't like, oh, I want to do this and I want to put my team in a bad spot and have to deal with salary cap issues. Like, you know, Sean Payton took this job thinking like, wait, I can get Russell Wilson going here and I don't have to worry about quarterback the next few years, right? One, there was the play on the field that you explained the right way. You know, he did, he did a good job right but like a good job in what context right a good job that we talked about they were managing him to a degree I'm sitting there and I'm telling you and we talked about this you know what late November where I'm going you know hey Russell he's got good numbers and all that sure but Sean Payton is finagled it that way you know you watch the film you watch a game and you go damn they they only run 10 or 12 plays on offense. Sean Payton's gotten 12,000 plays in his offense, let alone the things we talked about right at the end of November. Uh, you see, you, you don't see directing of traffic at the line of scrimmage. In fact, you always see, oh, no, where does people line up? And hopefully I can get them lined up to say said HUD in time. So I think from those things, then you couple that with how Russell Wilson handled this whole situation, that was the end. That was like, oh, wow, he's going to throw us under the bus. He's going to misspeak, try to change the perception and be politics and kiss babies like Sean Payton talked about before the year. Stop doing that. I bet you that was the last straw. To, to, to yep. the point, like you failed the human test here for where we don't want you leading our locker room anymore. That I, I mean, Sean Payton from school, Bill Parcells and everything else. I could tell you that doesn't fly 
right? So, you know, I think your points about that are spot on. And then the other thing is, Mike, you talk about the play, right? Here's fair to question. Like, let Russ work after the snap and all that. Let Russ cook, do all that. I, I Can he still do that at this age? Is it really Kenny? I mean, there's moments here and there, but it's not on a consistent basis to where like five years ago where I'd go, man, Russ is amazing. Just when he needs to make a play, he makes a play, right? I think that guy's gone. And then you couple that to kind of the other thing you said, Mike. I don't know if he's ever really run an offense at a high level to the things you're talking about. Breeze, Brady, Mahomes, right? Right? Get him in the right play. Check, check, check. Blah, blah, blah. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. New play. I dissected you and ran the offense the way it was supposed to be run and the way I was taught. Right? I think he ran an offense in Seattle, but he made plays at a high level. I don't know if he's ever run an offense at a high level. And I think when teams start to dissect Russ and watch film of this, they're going to come to the same conclusion and go, wait, this is kind of like he just kind of sits back there and watches the rush and doesn't throw the ball down the middle of the field, right? And he waits to see people come open, and then he wants to run around and do that. And as we saw this year a few times, and he tried to run around and do that, bad things happen. So that's what's crazy, Mike. I don't know where this is going to go. That's where I'm really interested in this Russell Wilson situation. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.